Hello and welcome back and today it's another experiment video. I know sometimes we talk about new stuff, old stuff, comparing stuff, but today it's another experimental one where we look at a device that's released by one brand and test it out on another. Now today I want to talk about this. This is Synology's brand new 10GBE and NVMe SSD cache card. It's a combo card that allows you to add the NVMe cache SSD performance improvements to your PCIe enabled Synology system and add a 10 GBE network port. This card released in July 2000, I think June, July 2020. Uh, we've already tested it out, done some performance benchmarks. We've even populated it with Synology's own range of SSDs, the SNV3400, all inside this. But the card is what we care about today. Now, we've already done tests with this card on a bunch of Synology NAS systems for our testing of VMs and 10 GBE and basically just cache performance benefits, just to show you guys exactly why it is something for you to consider in your home or business. But today, we are to install this card inside a QNAP. Now we've done it different ways before in different cards with QNAP cards in Synology and Synology cards in QNAP. But the reason we want to look at this card is twofold. First and foremost, because surprisingly, and quite a rarity for these videos, QNAP already has a card like this. This is the QM2, and this QM2 card here arrives with 10 GBE on the end there, and it arrives inside with two NVMe SSD caching bays. This has got a couple of Seagate Ironwolves inside this card, and it's even got that lovely heatsink and fan built into the top that the light in this studio is going bananas with. So why on earth would you want to test this card inside a QNAP NAS when they already have their own card? Well, the first clue is probably gonna to come to you by the size of those cards, namely, that the QNAP card takes advantage of PCIe Gen 2 times 4. And that is, for a number of you, not the best. It does present a little bit of a bottleneck if you are going to utilize 10 GPE and the SSDs live at the same time. A number of you take advantage of a card like this because though you want to take advantage of SSD caching, what you really want to do is edit on those NVMEs. And if you edit over 10 GPE onto those NVMEs, you know, just editing files on the fly, you may be presented with a bottleneck with that PCIe Gen 2 times 4 Now, <clears throat> let's be fair to QNAP. QNAP released this card almost, you know, I would say just over a year of unveiling this card before this one even arrived on the scene. They got to this kind of technology first, and you can't really blame them if the card they've released at the time doesn't fit how this technology has moved forward later. And maybe we'll see an upgrade to the QM2 card later on. But the Synology card arrives with this enormous heatsink. It arrives with support of longer SSDs, with each bay being PCIe Gen 3 times 4 of those NVMEs, and with the card itself arriving with PCIe Gen 3 times 8, allowing up to 8,000 megabytes per second um, via a single lane connectivity between this and the board on the Synology. So what we want to see today in this incredibly long intro is does this card function inside a QNAP? It almost certainly won't, but it might. And I don't know yet at this time of recording. So I'm going to make my way over there to a QNAP I've already got set up that features a PCIe Gen 3 slot. It's a rack mount. And I'll take I'll make sure I've got some video recording of me installing the card. Then we're going to boot that QNAP and we want to see two things. One, will it see the card? Two, will it be able to use the card? Because those are two different things. I think it probably will see the card, but whether it can interact with it is a different story entirely. So let's make our way over there, install this card inside that machine, and then check it out on my PC here and see if we can interact with the brand new Synology E10M20 T1 card on a QNAP NAS. Okay, so here is our network interface card, the Synology card there. Let's get that installed inside this system. And again, we're going for one of the PCIe Gen 3 slots. It is now installed. We're not going to worry too much about screwing it in. If we bring that down there, we can make out that the card itself has now been installed inside that slot. And if we make our way around to the back of the rack, we can see that 10GBE slot. 
So I apologize for the sound quality right now. It's just easier to do a mobile setup like this. But now we've got this card installed, let's go ahead and boot the device. Let's move back, go with the boot button. We can have a look, we've got some sort of LED activity there, but I would hardly say that is indicative of a success. There's the card. And let's make our way into QTS and see how successful this test will be. Right, so I've allowed QTS to boot up on the 877, and I'm sorry to say it looks like this has been a complete failure. Uh, the system has seemingly seen something, but not much. I've got to say that I would not recommend trying to use this card. It doesn't even appear on the expansion card listings, and it seemingly kind of breaks the graphic as well. There's meant to be a little bit more information than that there, but not really anything on screen. Now, I say almost a complete failure. If we go into the storage manager here, what you will notice if you go down to the cache storage, you like try to add cache as you normally would, but it says you need to connect an external, oh, sorry, the cache bay. You try to create an area of cache. I'll introduce what cache is. And you try to install stuff. But when you scroll down, you see PCIe unknown, PCIe unknown. And although you can't attach them, it has recognized the PCIe slots on the card. So it has registered something about that card. And indeed, if you go into the disks section, you're able to have a look and see that you've got all eight of those drives inside that I'm using in this particular rack mount. And then you've got two PCIe SSD bays. There's no more information than that. It hasn't recognized the Synology SNV 3400 SSDs. But it has at least acknowledged that it's there, which kind of tells you quite a lot about the architecture of this. Um, it would be interesting to see if the network interface port appears on the network. So the network and virtual interface area, which took an extra minute or so to boot up there. If we go into interfaces, what's quite interesting is it is seeing the 10 GPE port of that card. It's able to see more information about it. And on the hardware itself, it recognizes the Aquantia chip that's found on the E10M20 uh, to provide a 10 GBE connection across that card, but it still doesn't have the NVMe visibility of the um, SSDs, those Synology SSDs on the card. Now, if we switch back to the storage manager, during that slowdown of the network switch um, area loading up, we noticed that the uh, NVMe SSD bays have now since disappeared. So again, interesting developments are showing us here that this card certainly is not what I would call functional and does create an arguably unstable environment for you and your storage. So I don't recommend you utilize it in any QNAP environment. But I know this video hasn't incredibly been helpful to you. Let's be honest, you might have really looked forward to using this much faster bandwidth card. But this was never going to end up as a good story, to be honest. I don't really recommend mixing these brands' hardware too much. And there is a huge array of compatible cards on the QNAP website. Sorry this video didn't really give you the positive conclusion you might have liked. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more. And do remember, I will be doing more tests like this in future. So don't forget to subscribe to stay on top of those. Look at that big red arrow at the top. I will see you next time.